Today we are going to talk about ports, ports of call, no ports of speakers. Let's see. What do we got? Jerry in Palm Harbor, Florida. Hmm. Jerry's asking about ports and he lives in Palm Harbor. <laughs> Paul, thanks to your, that's pretty lame, sorry, but um, thanks to your YouTube videos, I'm learning a great deal about you and PS Audio. Good. I'm glad you're watching. I hope we can help you learn something about audio too. And I hope you're having fun. It's, th these are fun for me to put together and share with you. And um, I, I enjoy doing them. So I, I hope we can all learn together. Um, I ordered a direct stream memory player. Yes, nicely. Um, but here's my question. Um, the rear ported bookshelf speakers or front bookshelf spe or front port. So he's asking about um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of a front ported loudspeaker or a rear ported loudspeaker? I feel as though a rear ported speaker might produce less lower frequency response. Help guide me. You know, I'm, I'm certainly no port expert. I can, but let's, let's talk about what uh, a port is, what it does, why it's there. And I did come slightly prepared. I actually have two props today. I am so proud of myself. Okay, so can we, I don't know what you can see and what you can't. So this little guy back here on this ELAC speaker is a port. And it's a vent, or sometimes called a vent. And this vent, uh, if I were to stick my hand all the way in here, it's just a hole in the cabinet. So, you know, from the front of a speaker, when you look at a speaker here, see if I can pull this sucker off. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Damn, they put these things on here pretty good. Jeez Louise, this is our customer service manager speaker. I don't want to mess it up. So on the front, you see we got these little woofers here, and there's a tweeter. As I'm, I'm doing this, we're pressurizing the inside of the cabinet, um, except that the cabinet is not sealed because it has a port. Now this is a rear-mounted port, and if this were a different kind of speaker, we might have that port out here in front. There's also another type called a transmission line speaker that is also ported, and I'll try and explain what that is. But in the meantime, let's, let's, I got, here, got my other prop. Look at this bad boy. Yep. An infinity woofer. I, that's probably a, it's probably a 15 inch woofer. So notice when I, when I, oh man, that thing is dusty. If you can see here on the side, as I push this down, and this is how a speaker moves in and out, right? And it pressurizes the air. So as we're moving this in and out, the volume of the cabinet gets smaller. So imagine that big speaker or this little one inside of a sealed box. As the speaker goes in, the volume inside of the sealed cabinet gets smaller, right? Because we're taking up um, some space in there and that means that the air inside is pressurized and it makes it like a spring. It's hard for the woofer to push against that pressure. As it goes out the other way then we have the opposite effect. So a sealed box has um, causes trouble for the woofer to move in and out and the smaller the box the greater the amount of pressure uh, that uh, the speaker has to deal with. So Set that aside in your little shift registers and, and hold that there for a second. Now, as the speaker moves out, it's pushing the air forward in the room. It's also doing the opposite. It's pulling the, the, it's reducing the pressure inside of the speaker box. Or if the speaker was just sitting out in, in open air, a free air speaker, as, as it pushes in, this becomes the pressure pushing out and this is sucking in and the opposite happens. This presses out and this comes in, right? And that's called out of phase, right? So the pressure is, is, is greater here and less here. As it goes the other way, it's the opposite. Now, when we have out of phase signals or pressure, when the two, where the two meet in the room, they cancel each other. So 
if we have a, a, a pressure and a vacuum where those two meet, you wind up having nothing, right? Does that make sense? So that's the out of phase signal. So the back of the woofer has to be protected from the front of the woofer, which is why we have a box. The box keeps the back wave from meeting the front wave. And that box allows bass to come uh, at the expense of greater amplifier power to make up for the box, the pressure inside of the box that's kind of holding the speaker back. Now, if you port the thing, you're relieving some of that pressure inside the box, but at a very specific frequency. And that's determined by the size of this port. So low frequency waves don't really go through here a whole lot, but other waves, higher waves do. And what comes out of here is actually out of phase with the front, but there is actually output here that increases the level of bass. So a ported speaker basically has greater bass response at, 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 at a certain frequency than a sealed box. Uh, and uh, even though I'm not a big fan of ported speakers, never have liked them, um, I'm not, uh, if you put your ear up to a port, you'll hear it chuffing, huffing and chuffing, as, as my, my old mentor, uh, the founder of Infinity, Arnie Udell, used to say, it farts. And it kind of does sound like it's farting in the back, although not quite that raspy, you know, sound that our, our, our bodies make. But it, it is not a pleasant sound. Now, when it all adds together, you have um, better bass, uh, more bass, let's call it more bass when, when, it, when it comes out of the back. Now, a front port has to have a bit of a, a length to it, as, as my understanding in it, so that when it comes out of the front, it's actually in phase, which is what a transmission line does. A transmission line uh, is a folded um, maze within a speaker that uh, allows the wave to travel long enough so that by the time it comes out the front, it's in phase. And, and again, I'm not all that familiar with, with front ports, uh, how they achieve that, but I believe they come up with a similar kind of maze that uh, produces sound that is actually closer to in phase, so it, in, it increases. My guess is that rear speakers, uh, rear, rear ports are better simply because they're more prevalent and probably easier to design. And most of the speakers I've seen with ports have rear, so I'm gonna go, uh, and I'm claiming ignorance on this because I'm not a port guy, but uh, maybe someone will, uh, we got a lot of smart people commenting on this, so maybe someone can jump in and answer that. But that's what a port is. That's kind of why we put ports in things and, and why you need them and how a sealed box works. Hope you learned something today. Thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.